Welcome back to Indie Rockers Ball. Tonight we'll be hearing a review of Girl in Red's debut album as well as some recommendations from our IRB crew later on in our staff pick segment. Up next is some local music news. On October 22nd, Lively Arts will be bringing us a performance of the one-act comic opera Gianni Shichi by Puccini. The performance will be 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. in Fisher Auditorium. Price for tickets starts at $10. Local band Wasted Space will be playing a Halloween show on October 30th at 222 Arms by Ave in Pittsburgh. The show starts at 6.30 p.m. and costs $8 at the door. There will be a costume contest and prizes available for the best dress. So be sure to go in costume. Proof of vaccination or proof of a recent negative COVID test is required for entry. That's all the news I've got. Stay tuned for Music Lessons with Jed. Hey Rockers, welcome back to another episode of Guitar Lesson. This week, I'm going to be teaching you the intro and the chorus to Wake Up by Three Days Grace. So, the original song is in standard, but for when they play it acoustically and usually live, they'll play it in drop C sharp. So it's going to be top string down to C sharp and then the other five are tuned to half step down. So it'll be like that. So we're going to start is you're going to play a power chord with, uh, and it's going to be your pointer barring the E and the A on the second fret, and then your ring finger is going to be on the fourth fret of the D. And so the pattern is going to be this. It's going to be open onto two. So it's going to be A, D, A, so. And then it's going to go down to open G. And then back to D, A, D, so. So it's going to do that, and then it's, you're going to take your pointer off and just play like this. So just E, A, D, G, D, like that. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And you're going to play that twice, so it's going to go. Then you're going to hold that position and slide it up to where you're barring the fifth. So same thing, open. And then, and then here's where it's different at the end. You're going to walk down, so it's going to go top open, uh, seventh of the D, and then, so it's going to go. So seven, five, four. And then you can play open at the end too, so. So I'll play that again for you, and that does that through most of the verse. So it's going to be this. So it does that through that, and then you're going to go to the pre-chorus, and it's going to be that same position. You're going to have a bard on the seventh, ring finger on the ninth of the D. So it's gonna, and you're gonna play all the strings. So you'll play the bottom uh, three is open too. So it's gonna go like this. And then you're gonna slide it up two, and then towards on the ninth, and then the 10th, and then the 12th. So it's gonna go like this. Does that twice, so. On the second time, instead of going to up to 12, you're going to play an octave where your pointer is on the uh, ninth of the A and your ring's on the 11th of the G, so it's going to go. So just slide it from 9, 10 to 12, like that. And you play the top open string too. So that, again, the pre-chorus is. And 
last thing I'll show you is the chorus. So that's going to be just basically bar chords for the most part. So you're going to play like this. So open twice and then twice two power chord, open two. So one, one, two, two, one, two, one, two, one, one. So open two and then four times on the end of that. So that again is And then you go bar the fifth, five strokes. And then you play the octaves again, so. So you do that again in the second part of the chorus, so you go. And then this is where it's different. You're gonna bar up on the ninth, the, the top three, you're gonna bar the ninth and you're gonna play it open, so you're gonna go. And then slide it up onto the 10th. And then you play the octaves again at the very end of the chorus, and it goes. So it goes from 9 to 10 to 9 instead of up to 12. OK, so this is basically how you play uh, everything all together. Yes, that is basically how you play uh, Wake Up by Three Days Grace. Once again, thank you guys for watching as always, and we will see you next week. Hello, welcome to Staff Picks. Uh, today I'm here with... Uh, hi, I'm Sydney. Hello, I'm Flora. And we'll be discussing a few albums. Uh, let's get into it. So, what albums do you girls recommend? Would you like to go ahead and start? Uh, today, I personally recommend one of my favorite albums of all time. Um, it's called Love Potions by Starbenders. It came out in February of 2020. It's just an iconic, kind of almost a, a classic rock sound, um, but it's, it's perfect in my opinion. And what about you, Flora? What would you recommend? Well, funny you should ask, Cassandra. I happen to bring uh, the vinyl copy with me today, as I do Always, I keep it in my back pocket with me at all times. People ask me why, um, and the, the answer is because it is a wonderful album. It's, it is fantastic, Cassandra. Uh, <laughs> oh, good lord. Anyway, this right here is the album. Um, <laughs> Murmur by R.E.M. This has been one of my favorite albums, uh, in my top five favorite albums consistently since I was like, 13 years old, my older brother introduced me to uh, R.E.M. and it's been one of my favorite bands ever since. This is their debut album. Uh, it came out in 1983 and fun fact about this album, um, it actually beat out Thriller by Michael Jackson that year for a uh, top selling album. Um, wow. And yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think so. Uh, but yeah, that year whenever you looked at the, the, like the chart of the top selling albums, there was Michael Jackson, the, the iconic cover from, of, of Thriller in number two. And then above it at number one was this weird album with weeds on the cover. And so that's a factoid for you. That is very interesting. So what made this album more alluring to you than maybe some of their other work? So whenever I first saw this album when I was 13, um, I was immediately drawn to it because that cover is weird as hell. Um, and specifically, I was interested because this like tangle of weeds right here looks exactly like some some 
you'd see uh, in Pennsylvania, just like in like one of those untamed areas of weeds that you see along like a highway or something. And I was like, that looks exactly like where I live. And it, it's it's not in Pennsylvania. This is I'm pretty sure it's in Athens, Georgia, where they're from. But um, yeah, that's that's what drew me to it actually, the cover. So Sydney, you were telling us about the album you chose. Uh, what would you describe the style of rock that the band has in that specific album? Um, specifically in that album, it's really more of like a classic glam rock with some Ooh. like, it's got a little bit of like punk influence throughout, but really it's just that nice, hardcore, kind of almost headbanging hair rock that's really just easy to get into. It's really nice. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely love that. I definitely love the influx of rock coming back. Mm -hmm. um, I need to listen to that. I feel like for a few years it was it time to die down for a little. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that it's picking back up. People are getting back into it. Right. Oh, yeah. For both of you, what would you say your most favorite and least favorite tracks on your albums are? Uh, so this is a really difficult choice. Uh, these are some absolute classics, but uh, my, I'm going to say my favorites, not my least favorites, because I have no least favorites. Uh, my favorites off of here have to be Radio Free Europe. That is a classic. Um, I kick off a lot of my shows on WIUP with that song. It's just one of my favorites. Um, so Radio Free Europe and, gosh, Catapult. Mm, talk about the passion. Yeah, those are, those are my top three off, off the album. Uh, personally, my favorite song off of the album is Coming Up Roses. It's really heavy. It's really energetic. Um, to say I have like a least favorite track on that album, I don't know. I really don't. I know that sounds really generic and, you know, like not, you know, super concise, but every song on the album has like a memory for me because same, I, same. I got the CD for my car. My car doesn't have an aux cord. It's, it, it's ancient. It only plays CDs or tapes. And you know, each song kind of just has like a loving memory to it. You know what I mean? I, I right. don't really have a least favorite. Right. I know what you mean with that. Cause like uh, streaming music makes it really easy for you to skip around in an album and it kind of, it's eliminated the uh, expectation that an album is going to be like a complete experience that you have to listen to beginning to end, like, because uh, with, with analog mediums, you had no choice but to listen to it as like a full experience. Um, so I love whenever I've just had like physical copies of music and I haven't like been easily, easily been able to like skip around in it because I don't know, like there's just certain albums like that that you have to listen to them like through. Yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of cool that you only have like CDs and tape players in your car because like <laughs> it makes you listen to an album, you know? Yeah. I you really get just kind of the full experience with yeah. it. The whole album, it builds, it starts off strong and catchy, slows down, and then it really picks up towards the end, it gets intense. And you just you can't skip around it. Yeah. You know? You really have to go through it. So to single out one song and say that like, oh, you know, it's not my favorite, um, you, you can't, you know? It's all a part of the flow of the it's album itself. It's all part of a bigger story, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. That is great to hear. Uh, I love a good album that has a great song progression. I yeah. do feel like that is kind of getting to be a lost art. Right. So, if someone who had not heard of these albums before, uh, wanted to get into them, uh, what, what would you compare the albums to uh, sonically? So uh, this album um, and th this, this band in general, R.E.M., their early work was uh, you know, right in the height of and kind of coming off the heels of the post-punk era in the early 80s. Um, 1983, I would say, was um, you know, some of the last uh, few like prime years of post-punk. Um, so I would say that if somebody is into that kind of like, like jangle rock, post-punk kind of, kind of sound, they would absolutely love this. I think that it is quintessential in that, in that genre. So people who are into that can't miss out on this, I think. If I were to like, I don't know, I guess compare. Um, definitely, I don't know. They've got that like classic kind of like 80s hair metal sound, but 
Uh, Kimmy Shetler, the lead singer, um, she has almost a voice kind of similar to like that of Joan Jett's. Mm -hmm. So I would say like, you know, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts or even like the Runaways, but they also have those like really kind of catchy but fast paced and intense kind of like songs. So even like something a bit more mainstream like Motley Crue, you know what I mean? Just that like easy to get into kind of glam rock but intense kind of flow. When going through and listening to these albums, what emotions do they convey for you as a listener? So, well, for me, this is honestly really nostalgic because like I said, I've listened to it since early teen years. Um, and for me, it really just, it reminds me of my home state. It reminds me of, of home. It reminds me of driving through uh, rural Pennsylvania because uh, my brother and I would play this in the car a lot whenever we would drive anywhere. And I used to live in a very like rural setting. Um, so uh, I, I honestly just associate this album and its, its imagery and everything with uh, you know, the, the countryside of Pennsylvania. So it makes me feel nostalgic and at home, I guess. Uh, I guess for me, the same thing. It really kind of just invokes feelings of nostalgia. I mean, if I were to like, you know, listen to it um, and kind of, you know, detach my memories from it, it would make me feel pumped up and like really excited. But like, I have a lot of emotional attachment to that album because it was one of the first like CDs I got from my car before I'd have to tune into the radio. <laughs> but um, no, like, it just, it makes me think of senior year of high school and then it makes me just reminisce on that, especially about like my hometown, which is a mm -hmm. bit more rural. I mean, I got into my first car accident because I was jamming out and oh banging, <laughs> and then before I knew it, I scratched someone's bumper and took a chunk out of mine. So <laughs> I just, yeah, nostalgia, heavy nostalgia and crying to my mom on the phone for 10 minutes about, mom, I wrecked someone's car. That's, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I would, never, <laughs> I would never be able to listen to an album again if I was listening to it during a, during a car accident. Like, oh, I could, I could never listen to it again. I mean, <laughs> I scratched someone's bumper. I banged up someone's bumper in a church parking lot. Uh -huh. So I don't know if that really counts as something traumatic, but it makes me giggle. <laughs> All right. So for someone who has listened to these albums and enjoyed them personally, uh, what are some other maybe albums or artists that you would recommend for people to explore? Huh. Like I said Good earlier, question. yeah, definitely Joan Jett and the Black Hearts. Maybe I'm biased because I personally had a mullet that resembled Joan Jett's for a solid six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, mullet game. Joan Jett and the Black Hearts for sure. Um, specifically, we're just talking about that album. I would say go through, listen to the rest of their discography. It's fantastic um if you really want like that rock sound but you want something you know again a bit more contemporary maybe something that's a bit more mainstream sounding probably muse because again it's got that really kind of catchy like heavy guitar riffs um yeah that's really all i can recommend they're they have a unique sound it's really hard to go oh listen to this now I, it just, it's really hard to describe, you know, what they do. They're just their own individual entity. So, yeah, that's all I can say. Um, personally, I would say uh, if you're into this, you should listen to um, The Psychedelic Furs, um, yeah. maybe Romeo <laughs> Void. Uh, I think that those are sounds that you would really love if you're, if you're into this. All right, and this has been Staff Picks at Indie Rockers Ball on IUPTV. Welcome back to me talking about whatever the hell I want. Today we'll be taking a look at Girl in Red's album titled If I Could Make It Go Quiet. 22-year-old Norwegian musician Girl in Red, real name Marie Olven, finally released this debut album back in April. Up to that point, Olven's only releases had been a compilation album of 10 singles titled Beginnings that was only released on vinyl, as well as, most notably, the single We Fell In Love In October, which is the viral hit that Alvin is undeniably most known for. I'm a big fan of the sound on Alvin's first set of singles, so does the debut album hold up? I don't think it's going to be a surprise to most who have listened to the album that my choice for best track is Serotonin. 
The song really draws you in right off the bat with its infectious, deceptively upbeat, naive, almost immature and taunting melody. The jangling instrumentation to me simulates the anxious highs and frayed nerves felt when you're in a state of mania, and to me this also simulates the positive facade but turmoil-driven inner workings of being in that state. It also kind of represents what it's like to pretend that you're fine while hiding your true feelings from those around you. As the opening track, it kind of sets up this expectation for the rest of the album in terms of subject matter and tone. However, it does unfortunately take a sharp left immediately on the next track, which is titled Did You Come? While musically similar, the subject matter of the album goes from deeply personal and introspective on the opening song to raunchy revenge anthem on the second, at breakneck speed. This track does, however, continue the theme of expressing how mental illness can hinder one's impulse control, as do some of the other tracks on the album, including Body and Mind and Horny Love Sickness. This is a continuation of the theme of mental illness that I appreciate and is what I expected from the album based off of the opening track, as well as being what she expressed in interviews ahead of the album's release. However, in much of the album's remaining subject matter, a notable lack of self-awareness is apparent, which stands in stark contrast to the hyper-self-awareness shown on Serotonin. Here, before I really get into it, I should pause to mention that while I do not in any way seek to make any assumptions of Alvin's character or psychology here, I do see this as an interesting peek into what makes this artist tick, which is inevitable when any musician creates a raw and personal project such as this one. The self-awareness shown through the album seems to be exercised concerning personal matters, however, it disappears when it comes to empathy and how her behavior might affect others. That brings me to the worst track on the album. The next song I want to discuss is titled You Stupid which comes off as manipulative and controlling in a way that really puts me off. When put into a greater context of an entire track list that does tend towards themes of unhealthy lust and intense desire, I am led to believe that this is not an intentional choice. I will be straight here, I do not like this track. The tone directed towards the person being talked about in this song is concerning and the logic is twisted, which one could argue is intentional in pursuit of telling a story or portraying the inner workings of one's own flawed logic. However, this is not how it comes across to me. It has a seemingly total lack of awareness that makes me cringe while listening. This reminds me a lot of a track by Conan Gray titled King. It has similar themes that also kind of put me off. However, it is wholly more believable that King is intended to be satirical in its expression that he is the best that someone can do romantically. Basically, if the song was written by a man, I think that it would be far more intensely scrutinized. These statements concerning the album are not original by any means. Other reviewers have made similar observations to me on this, but that should speak to how true this feels while listening. Overall, while I definitely don't think I regard this album as negatively as some people do, this album was a mixed bag for me. As I always say, I have no issue with artists evolving their sound. I don't expect them to remain the same forever. However, personally, I do prefer the more shoegaze-leaning sound that she had in the beginning. I will actually be seeing Girl in Red in February of 2022 on her upcoming tour at the DC show. I'm definitely looking forward to it, being that when I saw Conan Gray on tour back in 2019 and she was opening for him, she was not performing at that particular show, of course. Back then, Olven had only a handful of tracks released, including We Fell in Love in October, so hopefully I will get to see her perform some older tracks alongside her new releases. That's all from me for now. See you whenever I've got something else to yap about. As always, thanks so much for watching. You can follow us on our social media, which is all linked down below in the description. See you next week. On next week's episode of Indie Rockers Ball, Lucy Panion will be joining us in studio to perform a few songs for us on Check This Out. Flora, may, Flora, may I? It's caught on your mask. Me. Can I? I'm just <laughs> interviewing you. Huh? It's. Can I fix it? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. It was irking me, but I don't know how you feel about people what touching albums? you. What is the overarching message or theme of this album? Do any Stop. other albums have a similar sound? Right. Is this your favorite work by this artist? If not, what is? <laughs>
not where it is. There, now it won't reflect. Reflect more. Baby, why are you upset? Oh, that's just my face. <laughs> that's just how I exist. That's just how I be. That's just, oh, I got a good scream in yesterday. It was nice. <laughs> ah! Your hair looks interesting. Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> fix it. Way to make her feel good about herself for her. Oh, no. Oh, it's getting worse. <laughs> Bananas, oranges, lemons. Grapes, apricots, peaches, pears, nectarines, plums, mangoes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. And then I'll have a little title card there. To me, this simulates a positive facade, but <laughs> To me, this simulates the positive facade. To me, this simulates the positive facade, but turmoil-driven inner workings of shit. All right, can you go back up a little bit? The inner workings of <laughs> However, it does unfortunately take a sharp left immediately on the next track, which is titled, Did You Come? While <laughs> yes, that's the title. While musically similar, the subject matter of the album goes from deeply personal and introspective on the opening song to raunchy revenge out. Oh. <laughs> there are moments on the album that expressed. Shit, I didn't finish writing that part. I didn't finish writing these parts. Okay, I'm gonna like. I'm gonna figure out how I'm gonna say this. Um, Freestyle. I hate freestyling. It's it's perfect in my opinion. All right. And one of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> asking her more questions, or do I move to you? You can go ahead and move to me. Today we'll be hearing a review of Girl in Red's debut album, as well as some recommendations for the IRB crew on the, later on our <laughs> staff. <laughs> <page. laughs> you'll 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 get it. Yuns are good to go. We're just taking it from the top. Yuns. On later on our oh, I made a typo. I'm so sorry. Pick segments. <laughs> Ignore that on that's in before it later. My bad. I was typing that <laughs> up top speed. <laughs> when the ADHD hits and you write the script right before the episode. Films. I mean. <laughs> oh. Yay. Okay. They said freestyle it. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> We're very professional here at IRB. Welcome back to Indie Rockers Ball. Today we'll be hearing a review of Girl in Red's debut album, as well as some recommendations from our RIB staff crew later on in our <laughs> staff pick segment. That's all right. Just like go through it a few times, read it IRB, a few times before IRB, we. IRB, IRB. You're almost there. IRB. <laughs> IRB. IRB. Okay. Welcome back to Indie Rockers Ball. Tonight we'll be hearing a review of Girl in Red's debut album as well as some recommendations from our IRB staff later on in our staff <laughs> pick segment. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry! No, you're good. No, that's fine.